Well, hello, hello, and welcome once again to a Beatles program that we call Things We Said Today. This is a weekly show in which we discuss, we discuss what's going on news-wise in the lives of the Beatles. Paul Ringo, the family members, anything related to the group, posthumous releases or news as far as John and George. That's what we talk about here on this show. I'm Ken Michaels, one of the co-hosts of the program. And many of you know me for my syndicated Beatles radio program called Every Little Thing. I'm being joined by my co-host, the man who writes for Beatles Examiner, and that being Steve Marinucci. Hi, Steve. Hi, Ken. Happy, uh, I should say Happy New Year, because although this is going to come out like the second or third week of the month, this will be the first show we've actually done in 2014. So um, yeah. Happy New Year to everybody out there. Happy New Year to you, Steve. Happy New Year to you, Ken. And uh, to all of our listeners, let's hope that this is a really great year. It's going to be tough, tough to compete with 2013. Uh, I don't know. This is going to be a this is going to be a pretty massive year. Um, I think that uh, when all is said and done at the end of the year, we're all going to go. Oh, we're going to be exhausted. <laughs> I think. Well, I hope you're right. And actually, what we're going to talk about on the show this time out is the coming year. Mm-hmm. And um, our last show, we reviewed what we felt were the top releases and also snuck in some events of 2013. And so kind of as a counterpoint to that, mm-hmm. our predictions, and maybe throw in a wish list of what we'd like to see happen in 2014, well, what yep. we think will happen. And so we're going to talk about the Beatles group-wise and also uh, solo releases from uh, each of the four Beatles, or or activities from Paul and Ringo. So I thought what we would do is uh, talk about John, Paul, George, Ringo, and then the Beatles, and each of us give our own uh, opinions of what we think will likely happen in 2014. I have a feeling that if you listen back to the same show that we did a year ago on this, we might have the same answers for a few of of uh, what our, our predictions are. You know, I didn't, I didn't even is. go back and review sh- review that show in putting together my predictions this year. But yeah, that's <laughs> that would have been interesting to do. I, I kind of, you know, to to figure out or to see how how much they match what we did last year. Well, every single year you'll get some of them correct and some of them you'll well, get sure. wrong. Sure, that's that's how it is. You <laughs> no, know, no no question about it. You know, but have, anyway, what do you want? You want to do the solo? Solo Beatles first? Let's do each of them, break them down, John, Paul, George, Ringo, and then we'll do the group. Okay, who do you want to start? you want to start with? Uh, start with John. John first? Yeah. You know, I, I, I think there's going to be, as far as releases go, I think there is a possibility that we could get a new Lennon release this year. I mean, it hasn't. It's been a while. And, sure has. And we're about due for something. I think, of course, that Yoko will, will tie in We'll do some tie-in with John. She always does, and that goes without saying. But I, I, I do think that there's a possibility of a Lennon release this year. I, you know, and that's just a wild guess on my part. I have nothing to go on, only because of the, you know, the time since the the reissues and uh, since the remasters and and since you know and actually you know since anything. I mean, it's been the John Lennon camp's been very quiet, exceptionally quiet. So I wouldn't be surprised if something shows up this year. Well, what exactly would you think might come out? I mean, uh, the year you're referring to there, 2010, mm-hmm. was the big year. was the year that John would have turned 70, and we had the, the Lennon right. signature box set and the, the Give Me Some Truth uh, DVD of videos and the CD. There's a lot of stuff that came out all at once in 2010, but ever since then it really has been, like I you think- said, quiet. I think the one thing one thing that could come out and it's been sticking out like a sore thumb is the um live in New York at Madison Square Garden show. Um that was on that was on VHS but hasn't come out uh you know, hasn't come out on Blu ray yet. I mean I think that's the obvious one, the one with Ellison's memory. I that would seem to be a perfect thing and I and I can't imagine why she hasn't put it out so far. I mean, I've heard, you know, I've, some people don't like the show. They thought, you know, the band sounded terrible. I thought they, you know, I thought it was a great show. 
you know, I wish I could have been there for that. Sorry, oh, yeah. But I regret not having gone to that concert because John's the only one of the four that I never saw live. Okay. But uh, I enjoy the concert a lot, and it's the only really full concert that John gave. Mm-hmm. You know, apart from the other appearances when he did a few songs, like with Elton John or Sir Lou Grade or the John Sinclair Rally. I mean, this well, was and a also full... the, the Frank Zappa stuff too. Yeah. Um, is also out there, and but that's again not a full concert, although it's it's as great as. As interesting as that is, I mean, you're right. I mean, this is, you know, and I, and I again, I don't understand why she hasn't put it out so far. I, I apparently from, uh, you know, from talks with, I mean, I've I talked with, you know, I've interviewed guys from the band, and they had no idea. So, right, it, you know, it's nobody, nobody seems to know what's going on there, or they're not saying, which is also a possibility that they can't say. Um, because of the secrecy around, you know, Beatle releases and stuff. But I, I just think there will be something from, from John this year. Yeah, but what, if you had to guess, what would come out? This is your prediction. The, predi- the prediction would be the, the live at Madison Square Garden. because okay. Only because it's been such a, a gap for so long. That would be that would be my prediction. Uh-huh. Okay. You? Uh, I would also, well, that that would be on my wish list Mm -hmm. because it needs to be cleaned up so bad. If you ever saw the video cassette of that, it's just very grainy. Oh, yeah, I know. I remember remember that. I remember how grainy it was. Uh, Sure. And, if I mean, if they fixed up, you figure if they fixed up a rock show as well as they did, they can do that. Right. And uh, also, I guess it's my my personal wish, and I I would hope that Yoko would do this because the material is there. I'm mm-hmm. sure that there are some fans who think what hasn't been done to John's catalog. It's it's limiting. There wasn't that much that he did after the Beatles. And uh, if you listen to the Lost Linen Tapes radio series, there's a lot of stuff that you could put on either a CD or a box set. I'd like to see just a single disc. With unreleased songs, there's still some songs that are there in the can that aired on that radio series that haven't come out yet. You can always have alternate takes of songs. I always enjoy hearing them. Alternate takes are a lot of fun, and sometimes remixes are a lot of fun. I really enjoyed when um, Stripped Down came out. That was another release in 2010, I forgot to mention. Mm-hmm. But you can apply that Stripped Down approach to a lot of John's solo albums. Or listen to Mind Games stripped down, or listen to Imagine or Walls and Bridges stripped down. Obviously, Plastic Auto Band was a stripped down album to begin with, but um, you know, to have something like that wouldn't be a bad idea at all. I would love if Yoko would do that with with all of John's solo releases. I would like. I, I mean, uh, it being you know, as crazy you know, I mean, just the crazy collector in me. It would be nice if they would put out that whole series of. Lost London broadcast, right? Maybe an MP3 format and sell it that way. That would be that would be fun, or sell it, you know, uh, sell it somehow. Uh, uh, put put them on digital and sell them in compressed form. But I, I obviously wouldn't put them out as albums, you know, because there were, you know, there were so many of them. But um, I, I would like to see that whole series out. And, and I know- think. It, you know, it would be a lot of fun. And mm-hmm. I remember back in the 80s, when I worked at WDHA in New Jersey, we carried the Lost Lennon tapes. Mm-hmm. And I had a lot of freedom to do what I wanted to do on my show. And because we carried the show and I was, and I had all the music there, um, I would often do something like, and this has been bootlegged since then, do like a, an alternate Imagine album. Mm-hmm. And, and every track would be an alternate take in the same sequence as the songs that are on the album do something just like that there's a, there's a number of different things you can still do with that catalog sure but i suppose overall if i had a wish and i would like yoko to keep doing this when the signature box set came out in 2010 there was a single disc with unreleased stuff right with a couple of unreleased songs like india india mm-hmm. was in there um and alternate takes to do a disc like that every year I mean, obviously, I'd like to see a box set like the the Lennon Anthology box set, which I mm-hmm. treasure. I love that box set. I'd love to see another one just like that. But if she doesn't do something in, in box set format, do a single just like that every year. The only thing the only thing about doing a box set that I have a problem with is that those things tend to get so expensive. And 
I guess I'm, I'm thinking about the, you know, the poor, the collectors and the fans who don't have the financial resources at this time, at this right. point, to buy, to spend a lot of money like that. I mean, for that, for that man, I mean, when the, um, when the smile box came out, when the Beach Boys smile box came out, it was a hundred, over a hundred dollars uh-huh. for everything. You could apply that to all of McCartney's remasters. Well, true. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, exactly. I, I, the only reason I'm thinking of the smile box is because this is something that hadn't been out before. Although, you know, the smile box did come out in a $30 version, you know, in a, what could be considered a popular price version. But the really good version with the best material had over $100. And not everybody can afford to do that. And I hate to see that kind of thing happen every time. Well, Wings Over America is a great example of that. Right. That, that was a spectacular box. And how many people could necessarily afford to do that? Mm-hmm. Not, every, not everybody. And that was one box where even I, and, I, and I've said before that I'm not the, you know, I'm not the screaming, yelling McCartney fan, but You're not? that was one that I really, really enjoyed. And, uh-huh. and I hate to see that kind of stuff come out and people who want it can't buy it. And that's what I'm afraid would happen with the women's stuff. And it would be nice if there could be some way for people to get that. Hmm. So okay. Outside of outside of <laughs> illegal downloads. Uh, you know, I mean, that's I'm not talking about that, obviously, but there we go. Well, if I had to predict, I would say what I just suggested, a single disc with unreleased material. Okay. That's my okay. prediction. We have nothing to go by. Cause we have like nothing you to said, go by. We're just having, sitting here having fun. Yeah. Okay, so let's get to Paul. What do you think will happen in 2014? Um, the... the Studio album is out of the question because he just did that. Mm-hmm. A lot, something live is probably very likely. I think. I mean, he's always he seemed to have he's done that continually, almost like clockwork. Every time a new phase of a tour goes goes by, and uh, that's a very poss- uh, likely possibility. Well, he's released a lot of live albums, but it, he hasn't had one out since Good Evening New York City. Mm-hmm. So how do you put together a live album when he's had so many legs of the last couple of tours and his set list has changed, and how do you pick the material? That's a good question. I don't know. I think you, I think he's probably going to settle on you know, kind of a compilation over over maybe a couple of, tours and put a few songs that were new to the tours benefit from Mr. Kite obviously would be would probably be one but there's a, there's all and and also some of the stuff from new so i that's probably what's going to happen there that's what you see for 2014 a lot that's of what i see for 2014 okay you that's it well i see a number of things not much but i see a number of things first of all the remastered series has to continue Mm-hmm. And so we've been hearing that um, Venus and Mars and Wings at the Speed of Sound are supposed to be the next batch of remasters. We've heard that for a while now, and I think that will definitely come out in 2014. And I also think he'll continue touring. That I uh, I didn't well we weren't talking about we weren't talking about that stuff, but I, oh I agree. Um, I think that's definitely going to happen. The thing about Paul touring is that it's a continuous thing. It's probably never going to stop. He's going to do scattered dates throughout the year in different locations, different continents, you know, and maybe, I don't know about the United States because he did some dates there last year, but you never know. He could could always go back to South America and Europe and Mm -hmm. just to Japan, so. Australia's been dying for him to come there, so Uh I hope uh, for their sake, for anybody listening in Australia, that he decides to do that. So, you know, we'll we'll see what we'll see what happens there. But definitely yeah, I, like you said, no new studio album as much as I'd love to hear another one. Mhm. But yeah. I, it's basically the remasters and more dates. I do think when you say more dates, I don't think I think the the number of dates is going to start slowing down a little bit. Well, I, I don't think gonna... he does a lot. <laughs> if, huh? you, if you if you were to look at the past year, if you were to add up all the dates, I don't think he did a lot overall. Mhm. I don't think it's that that strenuous. Well, considering the the length of those shows, it sure is. But hmm. I, I think he'll continue to slow down a little bit. So we okay. will see. We will see. George. 
I think we're about due for another. Somebody asked me this the other day on, I think on Facebook, about um, another Rare Tracks George release, and I'd really be takes. surprised if that doesn't show up this year. Hmm. Um, again, I think we're about due with that. I would sure would like to see some kind of big George reissue again of something or some kind of compilation of something. But what kind of compilation? I mean, a few years ago we had Let It Roll. Mhm. So, if you're looking for some kind of greatest hits, that was fairly recent. That was fairly recent, but you know, greatest hits greatest hits are forgotten or, or you know, or yesterday uh if they're not immediate. So, I wouldn't be surprised if something if something comes up somewhere if they they decide to do something, maybe an alternate. Maybe they'll even pick up on what Blue Lakers do and do an alternate something or other. But again, I'm just kind of I'm just kind of fantasizing. I don't know. I have no idea. I would love to see anything by George, a video comp, you know, a, a video compilation, something, anything, you know. Okay. I, I I agree with you. I think what we probably will see is early takes volume two. Because mm-hmm. Giles Martin has said that he's been asked to do more work on that. So um, that's more likely, and it's probably an easier uh, project to work on. For some reason, I know we mentioned this last year, and I, I for the life of me, I can't understand what's taking so long for the remasters for Dark Horse and Extra Texture. But I think the the problem is with Dark Horse, since that was 1974 and you had the tour that year, Mm-hmm. Will they tie the two together in some way and make a, a DVD that's a bonus feature, some kind of package where they put a CD, the CD, the remastered CD, and the DVD together? Maybe that's the complication right there. But it's been an awfully long time now since we've had the remastered CDs from George. Right. So the last one was Living in the Material World, which I believe was 2006, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's been a long time. So I don't know why there's been this this long holdup for those two albums. Um, that is my wish list, and I'd certainly like to see something from the '74 tour, a complete show, and uh, also, of course, something from the Live in Japan tour with Eric Clapton. I something don't think. I honestly there. don't think there's going to be. I, I honestly think they would have done that by now. Um, I've given up on that. It's been you know it's been so long. But it's such a big part of the history. Oh, I know, I know, and I agree with you. And believe me, nothing would make me happier than to have that whole show on, you know, on a, uh, a legitimate, legitimate video rather than the the echoey audience recordings that are floating around. Uh-huh. But it's just, it's not going to happen. I, I really have given up. I shouldn't say it's not going to happen because I think because I know it's not going to happen. I've just kind of given up on it. I'm I've lost hope on that. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, I feel the same way with George that I do with John in the sense that there's so few live appearances that were made after the Beatle breakup from them individually that everything that they've done should be because of its importance historically mm-hmm. should come out. Mm-hmm. In some ways, it doesn't even matter if if. The concert was that great to begin with. It's part of history. The mm-hmm. only time he ever toured the United States was in 1974. You know, that's the only tour he ever he, he ever did, any complete tour, except for the right. few dates in Japan. They're all important. Something should come out that's complete on, on both those tours. So, um, yeah, I'd like to see something like that happen. That's my wish list. Uh, but more likely, I think we'll get Early Takes Volume 2. And I would welcome that in a heartbeat because I loved Volume 1. And uh, I especially loved the sound of George and an acoustic guitar and not much else. <laughs> just stripped down to him and a guitar. It's just, it's magic. He, mm-hmm. he sounds wonderful. So then we get to Ringo. Ringo new album this year. Mm-hmm. I'm, I think of all the predictions I'm going to make on this show, I think that's the one I'm most certain about. Because it's been talked about, I mean... They've been talking about that, and uh, he hasn't said anything for a while. He's kind of kept it quiet, but I think that's what's going to happen. I think we ought to, I think that's something we may hear about mm, relatively soon. I think, but okay, we will see. But I think that's going to happen. And anything else with Ringo? Uh, he's going to tour again. Um, I think 
Uh, even though he toured um, South America last year, I think he'll be back here next year. Uh, I do a, do a more. He's going to kind of do what Paul's doing is you know split up his dates and come back to the U.S. But I think he, he is uh, so much uh, you know into doing that now, and he apparently loves his band which is kind of interesting, but I think he'll be back here doing that again. Well, do you think he'll keep the same band? Yeah. You yeah, do? I don't, think, I, don't think, I don't think he's going to change it. I don't think he's going to. I mean, he's held this band together so long now, uh, I I can't see him. I can't see it not happening. Hmm. That's but, really interesting because, you know, from, from tour to tour, he's always at least made one change. Oh, I know, and but he's, a, he's held this band together. For a while now, so yeah. no, I don't think it's going to happen. Okay. Anything else on Ringo? Um, I mean, outside of a, a tour and, and, a, and an album, I, no. I don't know how much else you can you can do. I mean, the <laughs> the, the exhibit's going to close in in LA, right? Which, if you haven't seen it, get down there and see that because it's not going. Because the Grammy Museum told me that it is not going traveling. So once it closes, it's done. So. Um, yes, you should see that. I would like to see the photograph book um, available in um, mass market. Mass market. Mm-hmm. I don't know that that's going to happen. It's nice that they did the ebook, um, but for everybody who doesn't have an iPad, that's kind of messed up. But mm. but I th- I'm hoping that that happens. I'm hoping that happens. Okay. Uh, I would say almost the same thing you just said about Ringo. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely a new album. If you follow what he's been doing in recent years, he puts out an album, a new album every two years. And for a while now, he's been releasing them the early part of the year. Yeah, and there there hasn't been any news yet, although it's, you know, still a couple weeks ago in the month, so who knows. He, but... he did say not long ago he's working on a new album, so I do right. believe that, you know, he takes his time, he has his own studio he invites people in whenever he feels like it. It's all done kind of like at a leisurely pace. And I do believe there will be a new album this year. And if anything, as far as solo releases, that's probably what I'm looking forward to the most. Yeah. And yeah. I always enjoy discovering who Ringo is working with, not only as musicians, but who he's writing with. And that's what I find most interesting. Because he's worked with a lot of different people, certainly as songwriters, too. And I love the last two albums. I really did. Uh-huh. So, which is unusual, because I haven't really... Some of his albums, you know, have kind of kind of just passed me by as, you know, really not all that exciting. But uh, I love the last two, and uh, so we'll see what comes what comes with the new album. Yeah, and I do believe, like you said, Steve, that he will tour again this year. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just it would be surprising to me if he kept the same band. It really would, because certainly he'd have to change some of the set list. You can't just play the same songs again for the same tour. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, certainly with Greg Raleigh and, and um, Steve Lukather and Todd Rundgren, there's so much great material there that they can, you know, shake up the set list a bit. And so could Ringo with his own songs. See, but see, I, and I think that's the important part. I think if Ringo shakes up the set list, nobody will be all that more, all that excited about the other guys. Or nobody will pay that much attention to what the other guys are doing if they're doing the same songs. Hmm. If Ringo decides to make some changes in his set list, which, given the past, he's not like, you know, it's like, you know, there's, uh, you know, he hasn't been doing it. So he does very little. Very little, you know. yeah. He's, he seems to be very, very hesitant about changing his set list. He likes to perform the same songs and thinks everybody hmm. loves that, which... You can take that for what it is. You, you know, know the, the the major changes with Ringo would be his newer material, what he chooses to, to do from his latest albums. Right. And once in a while, he will make a few changes, like bringing back Oh My My mm-hmm. a few years ago and uh, when he started doing What Goes On. You know, that was, that was a few changes, really. I'd like to, I mean, he could go deep into his catalog, and everybody would, would, would love it. I mean... You know, well, deep into the Beatles or deep into the solo? His, his solo catalog, and everybody would be thrilled. So well, I, I hope you're right. I do believe that there's a decent number of people who go to those shows for the other artists, too. It's not like they're just going to see Ringo. Right. I mean, I, I'm a 
fairly big Todd Rundgren fan, and I know there's a lot of Todd fans that go to the All Star Band shows mainly to see Todd. Mm-hmm. And but the great joy of seeing any of the All Star Band shows is that a lot of people who never went go there and they're blown away by it because they don't know what to expect. And you know, when almost all the songs are instantly familiar, and you're dealing with great musicians, and certainly this last lineup is a killer lineup. I mean, mm-hmm. Steve Lukather is a guitarist. Come on. <laughs> oh yeah, he's no, one. Of, he's he's really. I I, I mean I I can think of lineups that I probably like better in terms of star power but you're right these guys play they they're they're there to play mm, they're a great jam and band they are they are you know so i would be surprised to tell you the truth if we kept the exact same lineup i think there has to be a change that's what also keeps it interesting mm. but um also you got to figure not all these musicians can fit it into their schedule for many of them their livelihood is touring right. so there might be a chance that if one of them has the summer, which is usually when Flynn Ringo tours. If one of them has the summer already penciled in for their own tours, then they have to find someone else. So can't always assume that you can get the same musicians all the time. That's true. No, I agree. I agree. I agree. But we'll see what happens. I mean, I, I, I do think he'll be out there again. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, the group. <sighs> Man, this is going to be this is going to be one crazy, crazy year. You know, right now there are the uh, you know there's going to be all the celebrations. There is kind of a clue, and and I saw this the other day, and I and I on the Beatles website, and I went, really, they have a thing on the Beatles website asking people if they were at the Ed Sullivan show, and mm. I think the Beatles Live project is about to break. In some form, right. So I think, and I was really surprised at that. I, you know, it showed up quietly, um, without any warning, you know, doing this, and and I think they're gonna. I think they're about to do something, uh, asking uh, uh, people if they were, uh, you know. I think they're gonna do something there. They've also had a couple of other. There's a, there's a, uh, other things too on the. Um, on the um, Beatles website that uh, have, have looked interesting uh, to me. I mean, besides the usual merchandising stuff and all the usual junk that they do, but that uh, they've also uh, they promoted a connoisseur's list of uh, Beatles songs from Mojo, which was kind of interesting. But the but the, that Ed Sullivan thing really caught me by surprise. It was like I, I really so that that something's going to happen there. There had been the rumors about. Uh, a video compilation. I think that's probably. I think this is going to be a big year for releases. I think that video compilation will finally hit this year. Well, the thing is, we found out about that through a website, which, as you said in a previous show, was taken down. Right. But so far, everything that website has predicted has happened. Well, the, I look. You know, I looked at that because I I did I took the the graphic from that and saved it, and I looked to see. By chance, if with the rumors that are floating around today, as we're, we were talking about before we came on the air, about Paul and Ringo on Letterman, it's not there. So it's interesting as to whether or not that's going to happen or not. But right. in, in any event, the Ed Sullivan Show thing is here. I also think Let It Be is going to happen this year. Really? Yeah, I do. What makes you think so? Just to get wild, just a wild, just to, they're, they're going to milk. Uh, you know, strike while the iron is hot um, this year. Beatles are going to be big thi- or big things this year, and, and they know it. And they're going to every time, you know. I mean, look what they're doing with the U.S. albums. They're doing that, right. and uh, so I think there's going to be. And they're also supposed they're also supposed to do the vinyl box this year. I mean, the mono box this year. Uh-huh. There we go. Um, so. Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm I've, I've got too many things up. I mean, there's the possibility of let it be. There's the possibility of there's the mono box which we've already been promised, unless they decide to change their mind. There's just that Sullivan thing. So you know, there's a whole lot of possibilities. A whole lot. Okay. And plus another boot, the bootleg release for '64. That's true. Will they do that? And that you know that caught everybody by surprise. And I and I'm still reeling over that boy the way that went down uh, and i think everybody else i think that uh, floored everybody around christmas time and i wouldn't be surprised if we get another one of one of those yeah 
It would be nice if every single year we, we, we came to expect it in December, you know, like a Christmas present. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I kind of agree with almost everything you just said there. I think that might be too much that you packed into one year, but it is possible that they could be milking it for uh, 2014 for the mm -hmm. 50th anniversary. The thing about the live project, I, I really agree with you, although what exactly it will be, we're not sure. And one thing that kind of struck me is that I remember a couple months ago, Giles Martin made some some comment about the fact that he's involved with the project, but he can't tell you what it is, you know. And I'm thinking because we've been hearing a few things about this live project, and and prior to this thing about asking about were you at the Ed Sullivan show, the Beatles were asking you, you know, did you have any experiences seeing the Beatles live? Mm -hmm. uh, I guess that was just for. The American shows, I'm not sure. but um, That was for everything. That wasn't for, just for okay. American. That was yeah. worldwide. So something is definitely in the works. So how exactly this will be packaged? I mean, I would love to see complete shows, best pristine quality of the Beatles at Shea, the Washington Coliseum, the Budokan shows. You know, as Al Cozen was, was uh, telling us a, a few shows ago that he had heard that there's some kind of live project in the works. I think that's probably the next thing likely to happen. I do believe that the thing about the, the videos will happen, too. Mm -hmm. Although the only thing, and I was just thinking about this today, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. you get a lot of heat if this package came out and you're going by strictly number one songs and a song, for example, like Strawberry Fields Forever, which was such a groundbreaking video, was never a number one song. How can you possibly do a video compilation on the Beatles without having Strawberry Fields Forever? Right. You know, yeah. you have to have bonus videos or something. You couldn't keep it strictly just those 27 songs. And there are, um, like in the case of Eight Days a Week, there was never a video for that. So maybe a video will be put together for that. I don't know what. You've got a whole bunch of songs where they made more than one video. And then mm -hmm. you have to pick which video. Are you going to put all the videos in the compilation they, they or would, just I, one they for would. each? They wouldn't do that. Bootleggers would do that. They wouldn't do uh -huh. that. So you know, you got several videos for Hey Jude and Hello Goodbye and songs mm -hmm. like that. So how do you handle those? I don't and know. How do you when, pick if you're going to have one? How do you pick which one? Right. And you know, one thing I forgot to mention is the cartoons, but I don't think that's going to happen. That would be really nice, but I don't think I don't think they're going to do that. Hmm. That no. would be fun. But but if I had to guess, I'd say a live project and a video compilation. Okay. You're gonna pair, you're gonna narrow it down to two, huh? I think that would be a lot, mm -hmm. <laughs> given how you know cautious the Beatles have been with releases. Although you know something like On Air, we found out about not long before it came out. You know that was really surprising. You know usually there's some kind of big buildup for every Beatles release. Right. And something just goes out very quickly. You know from the moment that you hear it, and that was that was really surprising for me. But, think, yeah, also, the like you said, the bootleg recordings of 64. And that would be interesting to know what they would put on that, aside from all that it takes from uh, A Hard Day's Night and Beatles for Sale and the singles of that year. Would there be live appearances? Live you know, one thing we didn't mention about um, when we were talking about possible things, and this could encompass the, the solo, you know, the solo stuff, too, is the apps. There were several really nice apps that came out last year. Uh, the John Lennon Hunger app. I mean, the John Lennon Bermuda Tapes app. Mm -hmm. There's the George Harrison app. It's very possible that uh, they'll get more into that uh, this year and there'll be something else. Uh, Lennon would be actually a, another possibility there. If we're talking about unreleased stuff, doing that again. Um, so that would be that would be interesting. And and, and uh, maybe Ringo would do a, you know, a back in my archives type of thing, so that he, you know, uh, again keeping keeping him from from <laughs> writing the book. But uh, you know, so there's there's a there's possible possible apps that uh, uh, apps could could happen this year. Hmm. Too. Very good point there. Okay, so we just made our own predictions and our own wish lists of uh, what we hope will come out in 2014, or what we think will come out in 2014, we'd like to get your feedback on this. So if you can, why not write to us? Our email address is thingswesaidtodayradioshow at gmail.com. 
And if you want to get in touch with us, there's any number of ways you can do so. You can do it at that very same email. Things we said today radio show at gmail.com. We have our own Facebook page for Things We Said Today. Steve has his own Facebook page. I have my own under Ken Michaels. And you can also uh, check out my website, which is KenMichaelsRadio.com, which features trivia every single week, very often special contests, which I give away very unique items connected with the Beatles, and great interviews on the website. KenMichaelsRadio.com is the name. If you can, please give it a look. You want and I've, uh, as usual, I'm writing uh, almost daily, pretty much daily, on on the Beatles and writing all sorts of stuff. And not only that, you're also an author now. I'm also an author now. As a matter <laughs> of fact, uh, a little bit of news uh, as of uh, last night, actually, actually as of this morning, it's now on Smashwords.com. In addition to being on Amazon. And on Smashwords, it's available in all formats, so that if you have a Nook, if you have, you know, another kind of reader besides Kindle, I mean, the Kindle format is there too, but if you if you have another um, uh, reader besides a Kindle, you can you can get it there. And I'm looking into the possibility of doing it print-wise. Okay, you haven't even said what the name of the book is. <laughs> called <laughs> Meet a Monkey, Davy Jones. It's the only book on, in Amazon under my name, so. Okay. Um, but it's called Meet a Monkey, Davy Jones, and if it's my two interviews with Davy and and also reviewing the show they did uh, with him on the on the, uh, the last tour he did, and then um, I may do a print version. I'm looking into doing that. The thing is, though, that the print version is not going to be as cheap as it is in the e version. The e version is only at ninety nine cents. Hmm. I mean, it's going to have to be more because. One of the things I'm looking into is requiring me to expand the pages, which I can do, but it's it's going to mean it's going to cost more than 99 cents. But you'll okay. have it in print version. And I, and I have I have pictures I took of of them on tour that uh, I can use, and uh, so we'll see what happens. I'm going to have to read this. I you haven't read it yet? No, I'm sorry. Will, will oh. you come on my show and talk about it? <laughs> I would this come is, on this your is show where and he's going to be it? difficult. This is where he'll be difficult. I would I would I would gladly come on your show and talk about it. Too. Okay, you know that. All right, so, it's got to be all Beatle related though. Oh, okay. Well, the thing is that for anybody that's read it, the first interview is very Beatles related because it was inspired by a comment he was quoted as making about the Beatles, where the New York Post said he he, he said the Beatles were manufactured. It raised a heck of a stink and got a lot of press. And I contacted him at the time, and and I, you know, I contacted his rep, and I said, would he like to, you know, talk about this? And and they said yes, and he did. And I talked to him. I think I talked to him for about forty five minutes at the time. But um, yeah, so we we did talk about that, and he said all sorts of things, and they're all in the interview on the, on uh, in the book. So there okay. you go. I will definitely read it. Okay. Sounds so good. that puts our show to a close. I'm Ken Michaels, thanking you so much for listening, and I'll see you next time. And this is Steve Marinucci saying thanks for listening, Happy New Year, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>